Anybody care to join us in prayer, you may. Father, we just bless you, Father, for all that you're doing in our lives. We bless you, Father, for the class that we are putting on for people to be able to hear to what the written word says about our food. And uh, it says that we can eat and uh, provide the uh, fruit and vegetables and the herbs as long as they have seeds. And we thank you for that, Father, it's made my life completely changed. Has changed other people's lives as a result. So I can be a witness for what we are doing to make changes. Okay. One other part that we have to cover is, is a disclaimer. Uh, we're not physicians, we're not doctors, we're not dentists, nor chiropractors. Uh, we're just uh, simple folk that uh, we, we, we like to eat, as everybody does. And when we were raised, our eating habits were different. And we were pretty much taught how to eat, how to cook, how to do things, how to tie your shoelaces, you name it. And we found out it was wrong. It's kind of like this, the scenario I use is real simple. Uh, for years and years and years, my mother would take and cut a turkey in half and cook a half a turkey at a time. And then I asked her one day, why do you cut the turkey in half and cook it half at a time? She goes, I don't know, you're going to have to ask Grandma. So I went to Grandma and said, Grandma, why do you cut your turkey in half and cook it half at a time? She said, I don't know, ask Great Grandma. I went to Great Grandma and said, Great Grandma, why do you cut the turkey in half and cook only half at a time? No oh, hell, I don't do that anymore. I got a bigger oven. <laughs> so that's how we're trained: what to do, what to eat, but how to you know, do our shoelaces. Go to the doctor. Do these things. Um, doctors are great. Don't get me wrong. They, they're great at diagnosing. They're great in trauma. If you need them, yes, they're great. Uh, when we suffer from some disease, it's usually for a greater part of it because we're spiritually problematic and we're eating wrong. There's a second part to that. If we get physically out of shape, it could be depression, it could be anxiety, it could be stress, you name it, and then we're going to start eating to kind of compensate for that. Uh, I used to be a big guy and, and 315 pounds and it was much lighter. I've lost a whole other person. <laughs> and in more ways than one. Okay? So the disclaimer is that you know, we're not here to treat you, we're not here to cure you, we're just here to show you what happened as a result of making changes in our lives and getting an education as to what food can do for you. Hippocrates says that your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. So I don't know where they came up with making concoctions out of chemicals as a result because the Hippocratic Oath I thought it was going to follow Hippocrates. I don't think it does. Anyway, uh, what we've done is we've worked out kind of a simple system to try to transition people to eating food differently than the customers do. Uh, it starts with uh, we do some cooked food, but most of the food we do now is, is almost 100% raw. We're about 90% raw on our food. And at other times, we'll have some cooked food now and then, like rice. But you can sprout rice. So you don't have to just cook it. Everybody thinks you have to cook rice. Most of the store-bought rice, you have to cook because it's been parboiled or it's not going to be sproutable very easy. It's usually very old. But if you buy a sweet brown rice, you can sprout sweet brown rice. You can get that in store. Or water. You're not going to find it in Walmart, you're not going to find it in chain stores, Publix, things like that. You're going to find the sweet brown rice, but you're going to find that. Uh, but you can sprout just about any other seed out there, uh, garbanzo beans, peas, as long as they're not split. But peas will not sprout. Contrary to some people's belief, they usually they swell, but they, they don't sprout. Uh, uh, there's a uh, red rice that you can sprout. Red rice can? Uh, wait, honey. Okay. I'm sure there's others. You can sprout wheat. You can sp 
sprout barley, you can sprout as long as barley hasn't been polished out. Uh, you've got things that they're doing industrial-wise to make an industrious fashion. They're going to strip things off so they can use it somewhere else. A uh, great deal to do with that is milk. And you shouldn't have cow's milk. Sorry to say. But cow's milk, what they'll do is they'll, if you ever see it in a factory, manufactured cow's milk, they'll take and re take everything, all the fat comes out of it. 100% fat free. And then they'll add the fat back in to make the 1% or half percent or 2%. They'll add the fat in very precise so that they have the right amount of fat in it. But when they've taken it out, they've also created some problems. So now they're going to enrich it. Anytime you see the word enriched on a product, it can be pasta or rice, they've added something back because they've stripped something off to use it somewhere else. You've got to be aware that the whole food, the wholesomeness is whole food, the whole grain, the whole plant. Okay, there are certain foods you can't eat, but most foods you can eat and not cook. We're trying to get you to look at it as uncooking. Debbie, last uh, time we were here, I think the last time we made spaghetti, and the spaghetti we made was absolutely incredible. Everybody loved it. We had a raw sauce. It was a, a marinara sauce that was raw, and people couldn't believe it. They thought it was a cooked meal, but that's how you can make it so it tastes good. We're not adding our sugar. In fact, we don't even add any sugar. There's no sugar in it. Uh, if you cook it, I always added, I used to, when you cook pasta sauce, I would add sugar because it was so bitter from the acid. And then I didn't realize that those acids, the oxalic acid that's created from that, was so detrimental to my body, my joints were painful. Because okay. it was cooked. Because it was cooked. Oxalic acid is actually good for you in the raw state. Yes. So, okay. But it's, if it's cooked, it crystallizes in your kidneys. It can. Yeah. But There's raw. Two forms to everything. When you have oxalic acid, or it can be calcium, or it can be any one of the minerals and vitamins, there's what's called live and dead. If our solid is dead, that means it's been cooked. If it's alive, that means it's not been cooked. So we take the uncooking, and that's good for the body. And if you you have mixed as a vegetable, so fruits and things like that too, you have to be aware that if you're mixing an acidic fruit, you shouldn't have that with anything that has carbohydrate. Because when you do, you're locking up the oxalic acid with the calcium, formulating a different compound, and that compound is detrimental even if it's raw. So you have to be aware of that. These are things that it's a learning curve. It's taken us years to do this. Uh, uh, it's the really of, refined carbohydrates. Yeah, like refined. Like the white flowers and the white rice. Thank you. Uh, being it's refined grain. and not whole grain. So there are differences there. Typically, if it's whole grain, and it's wholesome, and it's whole form, uncooked, it's going to be good for you. There's a lot of good things in there. This young man, he's growing like a string bean, by the way. And now taller than me, only in the past three weeks. This is our son, Levi. Yeah. I'm Debbie, and this is yes, Carl, sorry, by the way, Debbie. for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, and, and needing the, the, the growing materials, he's getting that in the fruits and vegetables. He doesn't have to have meat. Uh, we don't eat a lot of meat. It's very expensive to one, and it's rare that we have it. It was something we had given up. I had to give it up altogether because of the diseases I had. They were so oppressing me that I, I was almost bedridden. And I was heading for the bedridden with a nightstand full of bottles, prescriptions. And I did not like the idea of having prescriptions. I've seen my parents go through it. My in-laws go through it. We've seen too many people die from having prescriptions, and this pharmacia was killing them. All it did was mask over, masks over pain. That's what aspirin does. It doesn't get rid of it. But I'll tell you what, what will get rid of pain is change your diet. Put some whole foods into it, and you'll get rid of your pain, back pain, shoulder pain. I got rid of my shoulder pain, which was expensive. I couldn't even lift my arm back here. It was painful, much less up here. Just couldn't do it. That was from the oxalic acid in the joints. 
giving me a lot of pain. Right. So if we get rid of what's causing the this ease, and that could be anything from cancer to joint pain, skin irritations, skin cancer, hair loss, all those things seem to go away when we have the right foods in our diet. Yeah, so, yeah the, the inability to use your hands after a while. You see some people are so arthritic that their hands will start to completely deform. And if you took a look at their dietary consumption over 50, 60, 70 years, you'll find out where it is. It was from eating and consuming way too much meat. And the meat's good, but put your portions down. Get them small. And don't cook the rest of it. Get the rest uncooked. But when you put meat in a diet and, and you have cooked vegetables, you compound the oxalic acid by about 100 fold by just doing that. Mixing the group plus cooking it. If you just uncook the vegetables and the fruits and you have a small amount of meat that's cooked, you're still going to get some oxalic acid, but it's not going to be detrimental. Unless you're in a lot of pain. And I give it up completely for a while, for probably a season of about three years. It'll take that long. But you will be relieved. But we're going to cook a little today which is unusual for me. But we're going to cook a little bit just to show you how to transition to the foods. How to use some of your normal things that you like and make it more raw. This is just to give you an idea of how you can make things more raw in, in anything that you do. So we're going to make an omelet for the first thing. And then obviously the eggs are going to be cooked. <laughs> you can have the oil, so. Yeah, you can. You can put them in your smoothies. Typically, you should cook the, the whites. Because that releases a, a B vitamin like that. Uh, you could cook the whites and then don't cook the yolk. That's fine. Put it in your smoothie, you'll never know it's there. Oh, do you? I do too. <laughs> I never have cooked mine very much. I use coconut oil for the cooking. Coconut oil is unique and it doesn't turn to a trans fat when it's being cooked. All other, I shouldn't say all other, with the exception of uh, the red palm oil, all the other oils out there, olive oils, things like that, uh, those wind up turning to trans fat. Everybody hear what a trans fat does to you? It doesn't break down your body, it causes a lot of problems internally, it clogs your arteries, it can kill you. Have too much. It will create, it'll turn to trans fat. See, when you heat something up, oils, when you heat the oils up, that's when they turn to trans fat. They're a good fat when you have them uncooked. But once you cook them, that's where the problems come in. See, anything when you cook it, it starts to give you problems. And that's kind of a good way to look at it. When you start cooking things down, then you're starting to have problems. Because it becomes inorganic. And I don't mean organic in the, in the sense that it's grown organic, but I'm talking about inorganic chemical compound. Uh, and it creates free radicals that yeah. build us in your body. So if you ask somebody in the Department of Chemistry and if you ask them organic and inorganic, so they tell you you have to superheat something to create an inorganic out of organic. And it changes the molecular structure of it.
heating. Right here. Hey, you gotta be glad it's been very cold here in Florida. so much I moved to Colorado where it was even colder. That's I withstood that cold, for, it? Yeah, it is. It's it is. It's a dry cold. It's a Colorado was actually exciting because uh, you could go out in Colorado weather. In fact, I was out one day washing my truck and uh, it was a nice 65 degree day. So I'm out there in shorts and t-shirt because there's no humidity. You don't feel that chill. It's not like the northeast of here. You can be out in shorts and t-shirt. Uh, so I'm out there washing the truck and all of a sudden I slipped. What's that? Look, like a slick. Went down, I touched it with oil. It was ice. It iced up. I, I just couldn't believe it. I was completely beside myself. So I went over to the thermometer. I looked on the wall and said 26 degrees. It's 26 degrees? Whoa! Didn't feel it. That's a good point. I, I love Florida. Yeah, comfortable all the time, except when it gets cold. I'm used to the warm weather now. Intercellular. Your cells, cell walls won't take it in. So it's important to keep those foods with enzymes in them. You'll see some of the manufacturers of the supplements today, you'll see that they're starting to integrate a plant based enzyme in the products. And that's for a reason, because they found the same thing that after studies were done, that they needed to keep them from getting, uh, they, they had to put enzymes in them so they could travel in and get into the intracellular part. But you don't need to have a purchase of vitamins and supplements if you simply will eat lots of raw food, you're not going to need anything extra. Do I look unhealthy? We don't take any supplements in the house. You can basically go down to the health food store and get all the supplements. Yeah, they sit in very close here. Basil in there? I still 
spinach, by the way, is one of the premier vegetables that will reduce oxalic acid dramatically in the body so that it will actually start to work on removing arthritis, rheumatism, things of that nature. And the recommendation would be to have a quarter cup of spinach juice every day. Raw, unheated spinach juice. Remember what we said before, the oxalic acid is good so long as you don't cook it. Cook it. Actually what oxalic acid does is it combines with the calcium to make it more uh, uh, say, uh, able to be uh, used by your body. Yes. So you want that oxalic acid. It's actually very good for you to absorb the calcium. Or well, a quarter cup of, uh, you can blend it, as long as you're getting about a quarter cup. Blenders are fine. One of the key elements to a good blender is it has to have enough power to literally take whatever you're putting in it and take it down to an atomic level. So, the typical household um, blenders don't do that. They don't have enough power, there's not enough speed, and they're going to be very inefficient in breaking it down into the atomic level and the molecular level. You've got to get everything broken down to give you the right benefit of what the content is. Otherwise, you juice it. You don't have one of the you know, music juicers, you don't have a good blender. You don't have a juicer. You blend it, and it needs wooden spoons. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's going to chew on it, gnaw on it. But uh, I mean, the blender I have, Blendtec, will take and eat a baseball bat. It's a, an amazing blender. Yeah, and then you have the Vitamix. Vitamix also. Uh, that's a good blender, and I've been told the wearing is a, another good one. Uh, it's a, pretty much a commercial unit. So, yeah. sausage in it, by the way, it is vegan. Yeah. And we also have uh, ve veggie parmesan. Yes. I put a sesame seed. Say that again. Use sesame. 
Uh, half a cup of sesame seeds, uh -huh. half a cup of walnuts, okay. and of course I grind those up really fine. Right. And a cup, cup of um, uh, nutritional yeast, and like I think about a half a cup of mineral And all these recipes are in Debbie's Uncookbook for available for $19.95. <laughs> <laughs>
Garbanzo bean pate. Now, this is good. The only thing that is cooked is going to be the bread. But uh, you can make your own dehydrated breads. You can get the uh, sprouted green breads commercially. Uh, manna is probably the best that I like because that's not a cooked bread. It's, it's manna. And it's very delicious. You can buy that in stores. Uh, the breads we use are from, uh, we're going to put a plug here for the German bread house, H-A-U-S. A German bakery. They're down on commercial and they are just east of 95 on the north side in a little A frame gingerbread house. Exquisite breads. Great, they really are. Good folks there too. Oh, yeah, they, they sell all kinds of desserts. They, they have vegan desserts. Even. A restaurant? No. The bread's a bakery. I haven't been there in a Yeah, they're cooked breads. They make them for Whole Foods. Find them in the so they are much cheaper than 
Yeah. Yes, they have sprouted in Whole Foods. These are not a sprouted bread, by the way. These are a, a organic bread from the bread house, using the, the organic ingredients, flowers, or quarter from Germany. Uh, quite a special piece. You know, there's no place else in the country that makes bread like the bread house. Guaranteed. Where do you get manna? Manna, you get in Whole Foods in the freezer section. And it's not a what about the Ezekiel? Ezekiel is sprouted bread and it is cooked, but it's very good. Yeah, yeah.